Back live now, this is uh, John Smith and Tonto. Off he goes. And hopefully... Oh, that's years of training right there. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 quintessential British TV moments. She just stands in front of the fire, um, in front of the TV, and just her ears are prick, she's watching it, and she's like in a trance. The competitor's main challenge is to stay afloat on the board. Can I get one question in here? <laughs> For this list, we're going to be looking over the moments across British TV that encapsulate everything hilarious and cringe about the culture. Do these summarise British wit, or would you rather never be reminded of these scenes again? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Cow Loves TV This Morning And this isn't just any cow. This is a cow that loves to watch the chase. <laughs> to be fair to the bovine, who doesn't love watching Bradley Walsh lose his mind over Fanny Schmeller? Hailing from Devon, Honey the Cow took the nation by storm when she was revealed to be a fan of the telly, happy to kick back in the living room and watch whatever was on. I've got pictures of her. She just stands in front of the fire, um, in front of the TV, and just... Her ears are prick, she's watching it, and she's like in a trance. While a tad bizarre, it's Honey's whimsical disposition and the fact that she seems to be put off by loose women that really left us endeared. Well, what about on, loose honey. women that follows our programme? Does she like loose women? Oh, yes, yeah, so the other day she was in here, she just wasn't really interested in watching that, so I had to put the chase on and then she was <laughs> At least she's got decent taste. Maybe she'll earn a guest spot on the chase next. Number 9 Interview Falls Apart. BBC News. Even on your best day, you've got to be on point to keep up with Lee Mack and his lightning fast wit. The man can unleash gag after gag in rapid succession, and most tend to land. His opening line was, he used to always be, um, he was a big fella, you know, and he used to say, um, can you see me at the back? Obviously everyone could. And they said, can you see me at the back? And uh, this bloke at the front said, if they can't, I'm swapping. Unless you're Susanna Reid who fails to grasp nearly all of his razor quips during an early morning interview. I don't get it. Well, don't worry. It's oh, my goodness. It's early. It's I don't early, know what. I've... Not one to miss out on the opportunity, Lee grills her about not getting the gist of the joke. The more flummoxed she gets, the more ammo Lee is given. Can you Rose. see me at the back? I mean, it's not hard. Come on. <laughs> Can you see me at the back? If they can't, I'm swapping. And so the cycle continues. Can I get one question in here? <laughs> Number 8, Peter Kay's John Smith adverts. Now the favourite, John Smith of Great Britain. What can he do? A running bomb. Oh, terrific. The crowd love it. And so do the judges. Peter Kay plus booze plus outrageous skits. Could there be a more perfect union? Unleashing a string of commercials for the famed Yorkshire beer, we were greeted to Kay taking the piss out of practically everything. There's no such thing as wardrobe monsters. It's the burglars that breaking through the window. That's what you want to be worried about. All loosely connected under the pretense of no nonsense. Nothing beats watching him ruin everything from crafts to diving competitions to weddings to relationships all the way to Vegas tribute acts. Kay and his northern charm take no prisoners. Have it. Oh, yes. That one about the old people's home was brutal. Come on, Mum. Time to go. Go? Go where? The old people's home. They'll look after you now. Number seven, Downing Street's chief mouser, Sky News. Larry is caught up in a what you might call a tabloid storm, and like a clearly like a lot of the victims of a tabloid storm, he's gone into hiding. So let's see if we can tempt him out. Goes to show the state of British politics when the public are far more interested in what happens between two raging furballs outside of Downing Street than anything else. In the deadliest divide since Brexit, Larry the Cat traded paws with the Foreign Office's very own Palmerston. Palmerston, the Foreign Office cat, and Larry, Downing Street's chief mouser, have today had their most brutal encounter yet. The photo evidence was raw and shocking, with the populace left reeling on whether to support the Aristocat or the Bureaucat. Perhaps we just need to have Larry fight Boris next and everything will magically sort itself out. Oh my goodness me, what might happen next? Number six, less than enthusiastic, BBC News. You're watching BBC News. 
just bear in mind it is August. Uh, this does not look like a walk in the park. Dog owners and their pets in California have hit the waves. If there's one thing that the Brits do better than anyone else, it's the innate ability to not give a crap to an unprecedented extent. Case in points, Simon McCoy, broadcaster, meant to be delivering the truth to viewers, forced to comment on a story involving surfing dogs, and he could not care less. The competitor's main challenge is to stay afloat on the board. The man can barely get through a sentence without sighing, like he wants this segment to be over with every fiber of his being. The winner, of course, being crowned top dog. That's a shame, we've run out of pictures. It's a shame they didn't make this into a running gag because it's just too funny. Number five, the fall of Gemma Collins. 10th BBC Radio 1's Teen Awards. The Radio 1 Teen Awards isn't exactly the place you expect to see a lot of drama, excitement, or anything really interesting. And yet, the moment you add Gemma Collins to the mix, the whole thing becomes a ticking time bomb waiting to go off. The winner of the Radio 1 Teen Award for Best TV Show is... Love Island! Though in this instance, it isn't so much the stuff that came out of her mouth, but rather her poor footwork. <laughs> There's something almost poetic about the star of Towie falling through a hole in the ground just as she announces Love Island as the winner of Best TV Show. Maybe the universe was sending a message. This is life! This is what happens! Number four, whoops, Sky News. Well, joining us now from central London is Sarah Idelby, who's a human rights barrister. Um, with uh, Seven Bedford Row. Uh, good to talk to you, Sarah. Just goes to show the value of communication in a workspace, especially if you're involved in live broadcasting. In what starts off as a serious story involving human rights, it becomes readily apparent that something is amiss, with the presenter stammering through her introduction before finally asking the identity of her interviewee. Can I just confirm who, who you are, madam? Sorry. Hi, I'm Erika Guevara from Amnesty International. Ah, we have the wrong guest up. Surprise, they booked the wrong guest. Left with egg on her face, all Jane Secker can do is pull a full retreat and wait in painful silence for the adverts to roll up. Someone probably got the Murdoch treatment for this flub. My uh, enormous apologies. Uh, we will come back to you in a second. We're going to take a short break. In the meantime, apologies for the confusion. Number three, the eye roll, pointless. Our first category for round one today is World Geography. Oh, this one hurts. Though we're not sure what's more painful, the answer this flustered contestant gives or the visceral response from her partner. OK, countries that end in two consonants. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah, anyway, listen, do you think about that with, with uh, two thirds of your brain? Asked to provide the name of a country that ends in two consonants, the selected student racks her brain and ultimately decides to go with... Oh, um, Paris. <laughs> I don't know, I can't think of anything. Paris. Well, glad to see her A-level in geography is taking her places. Paris, let's see. Uh, let's see what happens when we say Paris. Bad luck, Sarah. Though, honestly, it's the way her teammate rolls her eyes at such an obvious fail that had us in stitches. That's a friendship ender right there. Number two, panel show, Harry and Paul. For whom did everything go wrong this week? The government. <laughs> Is it Boris Johnson, tousle-haired shagger? It's like these two were challenging themselves to see just how many politicians, comedians, and other notable British celebs they could impersonate and ridicule in the shortest amount of time. Fair play to them because they stuffed in a lot. Russell, oh my God, the Daily Mail. Oh my God, the Daily Mail. Oh my God, the Daily Mail. Oh God, yeah, the Daily Mail. A satire of practically every panel show ever, the duo unleash some rather scathing impressions of Boris Johnson, Stephen Fry, David Mitchell, Ian Hislop, and numerous others, all turning into a crazy melting pot of wigs and accents. Though we say they play Andy Parsons to perfection. Disapproving look. 
stop, 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 stop starting and start stopping. Oh my god, the Daily Mail! Good night. Number one, Psy Off. Never mind the Buzzcocks. Back when Simon Amstel was running the show, you knew chaos and hilarity was never far off. No, it's sort of a despondent look that I've copied from Martin. Oh, go, go on. While this little incident may like Preston, it does pit Martin Freeman and Matthew Horne against each other to see who can pull off the most despondent look. Martin, why don't you show us your one? <laughs> <laughs> You'd think that the star of Gavin and Stacey would have it in the bag. But we can't forget that before Sherlock, The Hobbits, and the MCU, Freeman was killing it in the office. <laughs> Is it too late to get that sitcom about both these guys just sighing non-stop? Come on! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.